What's up everybody? Dan here with what unfortunately is going to be for right now the last Tool Tuesday in our hammer series. Don't worry, we will have more Tool Tuesdays coming out. But we are kind of at the end of the run of hammers and as many of you are probably wondering, would we talk about the Martinez hammer? So what exactly is this? As far as um, what a lot of people might say, this might be the cream of the crop, the top of the line, the best out there. Like everything, it's up to everybody's individual opinions and judgments. There isn't necessarily one hammer that's best for everybody and not necessarily one hammer that isn't really good for everybody. But as far as hammers, it's probably one of the most widely sought after by carpenters, at least to get their hands on it and try it. It's not well known, obviously, with the internet and YouTube and things like that. It's become more popular, more commonly known about. Um, but it's not a common hammer that you're going to find in your standard hardware store. It might be at a specialty lumber yard or something like that or online. So, Martinez. What is the story behind this guy? Mark Martinez started out with, I believe, Stiletto and he helped pioneer and create the original titanium hammer out there. So like the stiletto um, titanium that I showed you, the wood handled, that was one of his first hammers that he created. Um, there's another guy out on YouTube that uh, toured his shop factory, and you get to see all the uh, different attempts or iterations or modifications, versions, as you will, of that hammer over the years as he worked on developing it. And there were a lot. I mean, I think there were potentially several hundred hammers that he went through designing and building before he came up with the Stiletto Titanium one. Then he came out with the, uh, I think the TB1, TB2, whatever, that series in the last video, the all titanium handled hammer. And he then parted ways with Stiletto. I don't know if it was at that time. I think Milwaukee may have bought Stiletto. Um, but if, if I'm correct, I'll... I'll uh, put a note if I'm not. Um, but he parted the ways and he created his own company and now he's got a hammer that he feels is better than the stiletto. So what it is, is it's a, this one here, believe it or not, is a slightly bent handle. They have one that's very straight. It's a titanium shank and it's got basically a bolt-on all steel head. So it differs from the stiletto in that the head is not, not just the face is a bolt-on steel face, but the entire head is. It's got um, the magnetic nail setter. It's got a rather straight claw on the back and a waffle face or milled face. It's got the bolt on the backside to disconnect the head and slide it straight forward and off. And it's got a side nail puller. It's also got a, a cushion grip handle. And it's got a little bit of a thumb depression on the back here. So this hammer, um, a few things that I've heard about it. I have not seen anybody personally have these issues, but I have heard that one of the claws will notoriously break off. Um, like I said, I've never seen it happen, but I've heard of a few people having it happen to them. Anytime you uh, engineer something that's not 100% symmetrical and you're exerting force on it, typically the side that's less structural will fail before the other side. So what they did when they developed this is if you see the side face of the hammer here, it's got a drop down that kind of curves back like a convention conventional hammerhead, but on this side it's cut up and over to allow for the nail puller. So I guess supposedly these claws on this side where the nail puller is will break. Have I seen that? No. Um, would I not buy these? No. Um, and then the other thing is the bolt on the back. It's kind of a unique spline shank um, or spline headed bolt, which I don't know. I didn't see anything on his website where he actually had a socket to replace these particular bolts. So finding a socket that would work might be a little bit of a challenge. Um, maybe a 12 point socket would work, but that's neither here nor there in this video. So this is a M1 Model 1 15 ounce framing hammer. It's the slightly bent handle and it's got a milled face. You can get this in a straight handle and you can get it with the uh, smooth face also. So because I know you guys like this kind of stuff, or at least ask a lot of questions about it. I got my handy little field book here. I went on their website and got some current prices. The M1, which is here, the MSRP or manufacturer's suggested price is $250, but on his site, they'll do it for 225 
Like I said, they've got like four different combinations, handles and head styles. They also have an M4, which is a slightly lighter hammer. They're calling it their uh, finish hammer. It's a 12 ounce hammer. Again, you've got a lot of different combinations and it's got a rather squared off rectangular face on it. I don't have one of those. Um, that's about the same price as the M1. They have a what they call a dead blow cap, which is like a neoprene or soft cap that goes over that M4 hammer. And uh, that's for you know tapping on things that you don't want to mar up with a regular hammer. Now, one of the cool things that they've come out with, which I haven't seen before, is they call it their M79 sledge head or sledgehammer head. And it's basically, it's a big steel head that you bolt onto either this handle or an M4 handle. And uh, they say it equates to like a two power, two pound sledgehammer. I'll get that out. Uh, that's about 75 bucks. Maybe it might be kind of cool, but that's a pretty expensive sledgehammer and changing out your hammer head a lot to go back and forth might not be um, really advantageous, but maybe you get a couple hand handles and have fun. Um, as far as the replacement heads, the M1 head, the milled and the smooth face, there's no difference in price. Depending on where you get it, they're about 50 to 60 bucks a piece. You can get replacement grips. They have all different colors and styles um, and combinations. They run about 30 to 40 bucks a piece. And uh, the replacement handles, which is nice, you can get it for all the titanium ones. They run about 180 to 200 bucks, depending on which combination you get. The one interesting thing, they have a wood-handled steel-headed hammer that Martinez sells. And I guess there's one component of that hammer that they no longer can make or get. So they're selling them all out and they're discounted at 80 bucks a piece right now. And he says that they will sell them out at that discounted price. And once they're gone, they're gone. Too bad. So anyways, if you want to get a Martinez hammer for 80 bucks, wood-handled, steel-head, that's a pretty good deal. Maybe I'll uh, tease and see if I can get one sometime. But anyways, this is, in my opinion, a really nice hammer. I've used this a bit, not a whole lot, but I have used it a bit on a few projects. And I really like it. The steel head and the steel face kind of gives you that feeling that it's a really sturdy, heavy-duty hammer. Um, unlike an all-titanium, it feels a little bit softer, a little bit not quite as heavy, durable, but this still swings nicely because it is still a 15 ounce head. It's a fairly lightweight hammer. So let's take it outside like we always do and we'll swing it around, drive some nails, see how it pulls nails and I'll be back. Alright, so there you have it. We have driven some nails, we've pulled some nails, and I would have to say all around this is a really, really nice hammer. It lives up to kind of the uh, aura around it, the uh, talk of the town as it were, for a, being a nice hammer. It feels good in your hand, It doesn't. the grip is not too soft, not too hard, 
It drives nails really well. It feels really sturdy, yet not too heavy. It's got good balance. It doesn't feel like it wants to rotate in your hand when you're using it. The nail setter, I drove one nail there that literally probably got it in a third to maybe almost a halfway in with just the nail setter. So it's not like a tap and then you have to finish driving the nail. I mean, you can you can drive it in pretty well as I saw and found out. Um, all around, really nice. The side nail puller works really well. The claws are angled or sharp enough that you can run the nail out and walk it out side to side. Um, like any framing hammer where it's fairly flat across the top, when you are pulling the nail the conventional way like this, um, you're going from a flat point and trying to get up on the nose of the hammer. So it's a little bit of a tug match to get the nail started to where you're actually pivoting on the nose of the hammer. So that's one drawback that a lot of hammers have, especially this style with a fairly flat head. Um, they're made in the USA. They have their little sticker on top, which will either fall off or get scraped off or something at some point. But I would say it's a really nice hammer. Is it good enough for everybody to go out and buy one at this price? Probably not, um, especially if you're starting out. You know, don't run around and get a Martinez hammer if you're just deciding if you want to be a carpenter or not. Also, these things get stolen. Well, pretty much any nice hammer gets stolen nowadays. You know, you take your bags off, set them down, go to lunch, go to the porta potty, go to break, whatever, and you come back and you're missing a hammer. And I've heard of people losing hammers like this and they come back and they have like a Vaughn, you know, 22 ounce wood framed, wood handled hammer in place of this. So somebody just yanks it and trades it out and there you go, you're out 200 bucks. So on the whole, really nice hammer. Um, be coming back at you with kind of a review. I know this uh, series has taken quite a few months. We've had a lot of stuff going on, but I want to do kind of a breakdown of all the different hammers that we've covered and just kind of hit the high points and low points. Um, some of my recommendations or opinions might surprise you, but on the whole, I think we've gone from the least expensive, maybe not necessarily the worst, all the way through the most expensive, and maybe in some people's opinion, not necessarily the best. But until next time, remember to like, subscribe, and share. We appreciate all you that watch and subscribe. Comment, we have really good comments. We've got some people that just keep hammering those comments and giving good, good feedback and advice just interaction. So until next time, this is Dan with Dan and Sarah Makers. Have a good one. Bye.